Welcome once again to Spacember! A wonderful cavalcade of space games for December. That's where the name comes from. On this episode, we're going to be talking about Prey. 2017 Prey. But before we talk about the game, let's go over the space checklist! Okay! Microgravity! Yep, you do have microgravity sections of the game, mostly when you go outside of the space station. You are just floating around, free as can be. Oxygen meter. Yes, it's not really that prominently featured, but you do have an oxygen meter when you get into vacuum spaces. Uh, again, outside of the station, it usually happens. Aliens. Oh yeah! We'll talk about those in a minute. Lasers. Not necessarily lasers as you think about it, but I remember there's the, the Q-beam is a good example of, like, beam weapons, so I'm gonna say that's a yes. Uh, robots! Y yes There are, uh, turrets that are, like, automated turrets and such. Um, I don't know if that's really robots. Robots is a maybe. We're going to put a question mark there. Depends on your definition of robots. Spaceships. I mean, technically you're on, like, a space station in this game, but if we're talking about, like, actually piloting spaceships, which is what I've been thinking about in this, you, you don't pilot spaceships in this game. That's not something you do. Sorry. Sorry, Prey. You didn't get there. Uh, weird food. I, I mean, just random food. <laughs> That you find around... Oh, no, actually, there is some weird food that you find lying around that you can eat. It's a space station. They have, like, a bunch of processed food goods that that you can also turn into biomatter so that you can get med kits. We're gonna... I mean, it depends on your definition of weird food. We're gonna say yes. Yes-ish. So, Prey is a game by Human Head Studios that came out in 2006. That's not right. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For a second, I must have been thinking of a different Prey. Oh, right. Sorry. I'm, I'm getting my memories back. That's right. There actually was an original Prey that came out in 2006 and was developed by Human Head Studios. And I am going to just tell you right now, it bears no resemblance or have anything to do with the game that we're talking about today. In that game, you were, like, trapped on an alien space station, and there were, like, portals and gravity going on, and it was really more of an action game, like a first-person shooter, and it was, you know, well-received and everything like that, and they announced a Prey 2 shortly after that, and Prey 2 seemed like a really cool concept, which also seemed to be a completely different, except the character was going to be the same, that your main protagonist... But Prey 2 was a really cool idea, because what they were going to do is have you be like a, a bounty hunter, right? On an alien planet, but it was going to be like a seedy criminal underworld, sort of like um, Nar Shadda in the Star Wars universe, you know, like crime planet. And, and you're a bounty hunter, and you're finding, you know, the, the bad dudes that have bounties on their head, and you're, you're catching them, and you're turning them in for profit. Sort of like... Um, Odd World, Stranger's Wrath, a little little bit like that, and it looked really cool. It looked really cool. They showed some like active demos. Uh, not sure if they were just really well done pre rendered cutscenes, but they looked like they were in game, uh, and and everything looked really rosy uh, until that kind of got scrapped. In two thousand and nine, Bethesda acquired the rights to the franchise. And then in, like, 2014, Peter Hines came out and was like, Yeah, so, Prey 2, it was really neat, but it never got to where we wanted it to be, so we're gonna scrap that and do something different. And so, Prey 2 became one of those vaporware games. We, we never... We never got that game. I, I'm upset. It looked pretty good when I saw the demo. Anyway, point is... 
uh, Arcane Studios was put in charge of making a new Prey that was going to be the complete reboot, completely different. And so in 2017, they released the game that we're going to be talking about today. And not going to lie, kind of great that they did that because uh, Prey 2017 is just an excellent, excellent immersive sim. In case people are not familiar with what an immersive sim is, it's a, essentially like a, an action-adventure game, but with more of a focus on being able to play your own way, that there's multiple kinds of ways that you can address situations, not just one, and that your actions have consequences as you're going through. One of the interesting things about it is being able to use the systems that are put in place in order to... Uh, discover things that you otherwise couldn't discover. Maybe you need to access a room and you know the passcode. You find it somewhere because you're exploring around and you come across it. Well, now you can put the passcode in. Or you have hacking skills, so now I can use my hacking skill to get in. Or maybe I have the ability to lift really heavy boxes, so I lift the heavy box, throw it aside, and now I can get in there. Or, hey, in this game you get like a glue gun you go up, uh, you know, an elevator shaft with your glue gun and you can access places that you would normally just have to, you know, make the access work, you know. This is, uh, this is the fun thing about Immersive Sims. It's one of my favorite genres, and Prey is a really good example of it. In Prey, you play as Morgan Yu, who is ready to start for the first day at Transtar. And you load yourself up onto a helicopter... And you meet your brother, who's already well-established at this company, so that you can run through some preliminary tests of your physical and mental aptitude. And then, uh, something weird happens. A, uh, a coffee cup uh, turns into a black spider creature and attaches itself onto a scientist's face. And then you black out uh, due to some gas that comes into the chamber that you're in and wake up back at your apartment starting the day all over again. And it is at this point in the storyline, which I would say spoilers, but this does happen within like the first half hour of the game, you find out that this is all a simulation. And actually, you've worked for Transtar for a very long time. You're kind of a big deal there. And they just keep wiping your memory clean. You go to your office, you get a message from yourself explaining what the situation is and telling you about the alien species known as the Typhon. One of the most interesting things about the game is the Typhon. I will really take that away as an alien species and the variants therein the Typhon are terrific design because you just keep meeting new versions of them and they keep presenting new challenges. So the first ones that you meet are the Mimics. And the Mimics are excellent because they're these little spider creatures, but the big thing that they can do is they can mimic objects in the world and hide like they're ambush predators until you're close and then they'll turn back into their mimic form, their their normal form, and they'll leap at you and try to attack you. It makes you utterly paranoid of everything in the world, and that's why they're presented to you so early on, because now it makes you not trust anything in this place. There is uh, literally a laboratory that you go to where the scientists had realized this, and so they started putting sticky notes on everything, saying not a mimic, because they started to realize, well, the mimics could, could replicate like a coffee cup or a microscope or something, but they can't replicate the little note on it that says not a mimic. So you're going around like, does that object say not a mimic on it? Does that object say not a mimic on it? Every time you start seeing two of the same object near each other, uh-oh. This has got to be a mimic. And now you have to see, because if you can shoot the mimic before it turns back, you get extra damage to it. So, you know, 
But the mimics are a great entry point into this world because they immediately tell you, you can't trust anything in this world. Then you start meeting the phantoms. And the phantoms are like humanoid versions, but they can actually shift. You know, some of them have electrical powers, some of them have fire powers, uh, but they'll, they'll like shift out of reality and back into reality. And the rules of how they move and how they hunt become more complex as time goes on. You start to meet weavers who, you know, will like, you know, weave these, these coral threads throughout the world. You start meeting all of these very interesting variants and they all work differently and you have to address them all differently as time goes on. So you're constantly given these new challenges based on the new variants of these creatures that you are meeting and what you want to do with them. Another thing that gets introduced very early on is the Neuromod system. Neuromods will allow you to upgrade your character. That's essentially the character upgrade system that they have in the game. And there's a lot of basic ones so that you can lift heavier objects or you can learn how to hack into stuff uh, or, you know, that you're, you can better upgrade your weaponry or do more damage with it or, you know, sneak more effectively. But then, at a certain point in the game, you realize that there's, like, Typhon abilities that you can unlock with this. And in fact, that seems to be the main thing that they were trying to research at the station, is unlocking and harnessing the power of the Typhon so that people could access those abilities. But they do a really smart thing in this game, which is where you have trade-offs. You know, I could take some of the powers that the Typhon have, but if I take too many of them, the system won't recognize me anymore. The station won't recognize me anymore. Turrets will attack me. Operators, those, those little, like, repair bots and medical bots, won't want to help me. Nothing will serve me. They won't recognize me as human anymore. The station won't, because I'm not human anymore. And so these are trade-offs that you have to start really thinking about seriously in how you're going to traverse this world. One of the more interesting challenges that you are given in the game is that there are still other people alive on the station. In fact, there's a whole crew roster. And something I found really interesting is that if you find corpses of crew around this facility, they're not just crew members. They literally have names, and they were assigned to different divisions. Like, e every corpse you find in this game belonged to a named character. But that is also true of characters that are still alive or hold up, and also for those that are under the spell of telepaths. So, you'll have these telepaths that control people's minds, and basically use them as exploding bombs, so that they can go up to people and explode. And if you want to try and save them, you have to be very tactical as how do you, you deal with the telepath itself. And so you either have to figure out a way to non-lethally neutralize the people before you deal with the telepath, you have to be able to kill the telepath before any of the people explode, which will release their grasp on the human crew members, or you have to, like, throw down null waves to inhibit their ability. You have to really think tactically about that because you're essentially in a hostage situation, and as we all know, if you're in a hostage situation, one of the best things that you want to do is make sure that you keep all of the hostages alive. That's definitely something that you want to do. Anyway, Prey does have like a crafting system essentially in the game, but it is very light. There's essentially four different main components that you use, like organic and inorganic material, Typhon material, like, you know, uh, alien material. And 
you can use a, a certain level of bricks in order to build guns or ammunition. You can eventually even make neuromods themselves. And it's actually a very, very simple process because you break down stuff that you don't want, turn it into materials, and then you slot in a certain number in order to make the thing that you want to make. It is not laborious, it's very easy to use, and it doesn't drag down the game. So it's, it's done right, the way they implement it. You also get some different uh, abilities for both like your psychoscope which you get uh, at one point in the game so that you can analyze and scan data in similar fashion to like the camera in Bioshock where you could collect data on your enemies from afar before they come and try to kill you. Also to your suit itself to give you special mods and abilities of the course of time. You, in addition to doing the main storyline, have a lot of subquests that mostly come around when you access audio logs or files on people's computer and find out that they had stashes stored somewhere or that they were trying to meet someone at a location and you have to go and see what happened there. Uh, a lot of really interesting stuff that isn't just menial tasks of going to point A and collecting number B. Uh, this is a lot more to do with the interpersonal lives of the people that were on this ship, both the living and the dead, and where they are at now. Uh, it is a, a lot more of, of a narrative-focused uh, storyline when it even comes to those little side quests and submissions. You know, when I was talking about Starfield, I was saying that there wasn't a lot that I really remember about the game. Prey, on the other hand, does not have that problem. Uh, not only do I remember some of the characters themselves, I remember locations. I remember the different places that I go. I remember the first time that you get into, like, the lobby of the Talos space station, and you realize that this is sort of like your hub area. I remember getting to the crew quarters for the first time, and seeing all of like the lived-in spaces of, of all the people that were there. Uh, I remember doing spacewalks. I, I remember finding people that were out there among the space wreckage. Uh, I remember where I found my Q gun and could immediately test it on one of the phantoms that was trapped there. I remember a lot of this stuff, and even though the game is a fraction of the length, these things really stick out to you. Oh, like the Arboretum. Yeah, the, the Arboretum and, and the Garden, and then there's a, one of those telepaths that are in there, and, and you're, you're like trying to figure out how you can deal with them, but they've got like three people uh, trapped, trapped with them in this garden. And how are you going to access it? Because, you know, you, the, the doors are all locked down. Uh, it's, it's stuff like this that is just far more memorable. They do a great job of creating these separate spaces. There's only a few places that really feel laborious, like when you get into the, the guts, it's literally called G-U-T-S, uh, of the station, and it's all microgravity, and it's easy to get yourself turned around, and it's just corridors that are like behind the scenes. Those aren't great, but... Most of the stuff that's on the station has real personality to it from the the cargo areas that definitely look and feel like cargo areas uh, to the the loading bays to the medical facilities and and all, all of these different places. They, they really do feel unique even though they still feel like the same space station. I'm not going to spoil the ending to Prey. In the same way, I didn't want to spoil the ending to Starfield, but what I will say is that the ending of Prey is a really good subversion, a, a nice little twist, that in some ways they set up, no, actually in a lot of ways, that they have properly set up. So it's not just a, a jarring, oh, we have a shaggy dog, did you see the shaggy dog? It's, it's something that has had set up and payoff throughout the game. This, along with the Dishonored series, is really peak arcane, and it's the reason why 
I, for a really long time, had such a soft spot for for Arcane Studios and the work that they did. Um, and then they did, like, Deathloop, which I didn't really care about. And then they did Redfall. We don't talk about Redfall. The point is, is that when they were good, they were so, so good. Prey is one of those games that is just great to this day. It's great to this day. It is so enjoyable. It is so well done. It is very replayable. And I have not gotten a chance to play Moon Crash, which was the DLC that came with it, but I have heard that it's absolutely spectacular and one of the best pieces of DLC ever. But I'm not going to talk about that because I haven't played it. The point is, is that Prey 2017 is a great example of remaking a game, rebooting a franchise in the right way. It just did so much right by focusing on the story, by pacing it correctly, by creating this great atmosphere of a space station that's under attack by an alien species that doesn't follow the rules of human society, but seems so ethereally different that you can't quite comprehend how they function, gives you this feeling of the unknown around every corner, gives a great atmosphere of being paranoid of everything around every, every corridor, and makes you even start questioning what objects are real. Pacing, ambiance, gameplay, all the mechanical systems that they put into place, the way that you interact with the aliens, uh, how the Typhon work, the AI that they use for it, uh, the, the whole thing. All of the systems work so well together and that if people today are not aware of, should go back and play it. Uh, because it's been like six years since it came out and I have a feeling that a lot of gamers today might have missed it or forgotten about it and I really wish they hadn't. It's Arcane's full body of experience doing the kind of game that they do best and delivering. I would not recommend a game instead of Prey, but what I will do is give you another game that you should probably check out that's kind of in the same spirit of Prey, and that's Control. And Control from Remedy is a game where you go to a facility and you are... Are, are dealing with forces that are outside the realm of, like, human understanding, that bends the nature of, of like, space and reality itself, uh, to the point that some of the biggest villains that you have to deal with are, like, a refrigerator. And you it, they will make you incredibly afraid of the refrigerator. It's that kind of game. It's done incredibly well. You start gaining some really interesting powers. You have this one gun that they let you do different variants of for for upgrades and stuff. It's a it's it's a very well done game. It got a lot of attention at the time because Remedy has a tendency to do that. It's the kind of game that I think of when we're talking about the best things that Prey does, which is, is that idea of fighting something that is beyond normal comprehension, it does that in a similar fashion. And it, it also does that very well. Did you, uh... Did you have two mine carts when you came down here? There's two mine carts. Why are there two? I only have one. Uh-oh. Tell you what. Um, I'm going to go over here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over here. And um, you have a great day. If you live through it. And um, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to leave now. You have, um, you have a great day. Um, I suggest taking the mine card on the left. Okay, bye. 
they are doomed. They're just doomed. 